Hey folks, Sam with Sam Wood Outdoors. It's time for another trapping video, but before we do that, I wanna thank you guys for uh, watching my videos. You've made my trapping videos like the most popular on YouTube, that's pretty crazy. Fast Track to Coon Trapping has uh, gotten over 350,000 views right now, and that's pretty amazing. I, I'm pretty sure that is the number one trapping video on YouTube. Um, if you like my videos, please take a second and subscribe to my channel. I know a lot of guys out there are like, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. The only reason I'm asking you is because the more popular this channel gets, the more it shows up in the feeds and, and the stuff like that, and the more people we're gonna get out to. But anyways, now it's time to get back to work. This video is gonna be called Trapping Burger King Style. Now I know you guys are all thinking, okay, he comes up with some pretty cool names, but this time he done fell out of his rocker. Not really, just listen, Burger King style. If you watch the Fast Track to Coon Trapping, you remember me talking about how a coon lives here, here's his house, and he leaves his house most of the time to go and eat, and he knows where the best food is, like I said. I know where the best french fries are. He knows where the best corn is. He knows where the best fish, minnows, or crawdads are. Heck, he even knows where the best garbage cans are. So he knows. And then when he leaves his house, he goes right to where he wants to go. Just like we do. We go right to where we want to go. We're pretty, mammals are pretty direct. You take the easiest point or the easiest way of travel and then we go and we get it done. Coons are the same way. In the fast track of coon trapping, I said you had to get a trap somewhere between here and here. Didn't matter if it was right next to here or it was right next to here or it was in the middle. It had to be there. This concept, um, it started a few years ago and it slowly developed and last year I tested it out pretty hard and I really like the direction it's going. It's called Burger King Trapping. Now, in relation to us, we, uh, we're going to the same spots, we drive, we know the roads, we don't hardly ever deviate from where we are going. Neither do coons. So there's a lot of area that we don't go to. I might know there's a vacant lot five blocks from where I normally go, but I don't ever go to that vacant lot because I never have a reason to go there. Coons are the same way. There's a lot of area they've just maybe walked through every once in a while, but whatever, but they don't really go there. They have no reason to go there. They don't go there. So that being said, if somebody builds a Burger King in that vacant lot, now lots of people have a reason and they go there. It's food. Same thing with a coon. We're going to build a Burger King. Not really. We're going to put feeders out. And when we put feeders out, that's going to draw the coons from all over to a specific spot that we want them to go to, not necessarily somewhere they always go to. So, first off, we're going to show you how we make my feeders. I've come up with some pretty good ways. And then second, we're going to show you the best way to use them, where to use them, and then we're gonna get out there and we're gonna catch us some coons. All right, folks, here's our Burger King, or we're gonna be our coon feeder. Pretty simple, you can make this out of uh, just a five gallon bucket or anything, but I got these jugs, they're square. I got a bunch of them and they stack and, and things are good. But really all you need is either the jug or a five gallon bucket or anything. You gotta have a top on it. You need a inch and a half 45 degree elbow PVC, but you got to make sure one end is male and the other end is a female. That, that's pretty important. Need an inch and a half spade bit and a torch. So let's get to show you how to do this. Really simple. First thing you're going to do is drill your hole. You want it towards the bottom, but not specifically right on the bottom. So there's our hole. Now, what this does is this, we're gonna put this in there, the male end first, 
and that's gonna cause this. And now what happens is you fill this up and it doesn't run out. The coon actually reaches his hand in and grabs it. So you want it not right at the bottom, but you want it so when you put it in here, it's like that far from the bottom. That way when the coon reaches in there to grab it, it steadily empties the jug. So now that we got our hole cut, we're gonna take our torch Here. Take the torch and we're going to heat up around that hole. We don't want to melt it, melt it. We just want to heat it up so it's soft. And then we're going to take our knife and we're going to put little, just a couple little grooves in there. And you could probably, I guess I do do the knife before I heat it up. So you want to put a groove at 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock. And then you want to cut another groove. Can we get a close-up of that one? Get, get another groove here. You just want to cut them in basically about that far. So you get them in at 12, 3, 6, and 9, and then put another groove right there in between them. Then you'll take your torch, and you'll get that heated up. So it's nice and flexible and a little bit melted around the edge. Then you go ahead and you stick your PVC in there, get it lined up, and then you just let it sit. And then what will happen is it'll get hard in there. It'll still be able to turn, but it won't come out or anything like that. If you do a five gallon bucket, I, I think you could put some uh, PVC cleaner and glue on there and glue them right in. But this has been working for me. I haven't had any problem. Like I said, inch and a half spade, cut it around so you can push that in there. And then all we're gonna do, take a rope, put it through here, tie it up to a tree. You know about that far off the ground? First one I'm gonna show you how to make. Real simple is this four inch drain tile feeder. You're gonna need uh, end caps and you're gonna need the drain tiles. It comes in a 10 foot length. Um, if you cut it 16 inches, you can get seven of them out of there. You'll end up with a little scrap on the end, but the ends that you see, this end is standard size. This end's a little bit bigger. It's made to stick the next piece and keep going. So you're gonna have a little bit of waste here. So it's about 16 inches a piece, you get seven of them. So you're gonna need 14 of these. So let's get started. Real easy, you don't need no special tools, you just need a knife. And then you go through, stab it. Cut it just like that. That's what you'll end up with. Set it down, stab it again, take your knife. You don't have to do nothing fancy. It's gonna be about an inch and a half opening or so. Just like that. Snuff Coon's gonna get his hand in there and go to eating. I always cut two holes because Coon's traveling pairs and stuff like that. And so we'll give them each a spot to eat. We get two holes just like that. Snap your end cap on. Now when you go to fill these, it's real easy. You pull them up out of the ground, put your hand over one hole, pull the cap off, tip it up like this, pour your feet in there, slap your other end on, tip it back down, you're ready to go. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna stake it down. I have a bunch of these stakes. These are terrible, shitty ass trapping stakes. You don't ever wanna have a T on them. Um, but I've had these for years. I think I made them way back in the day when I was younger, but uh, they work really good on these feeders. So what you want to do is make sure your holes are on top. Go ahead, push it through. It's like that. Now when you get to your spot, you can have them already have the stakes in them. Jab it in the ground, fill them up, you're ready to go. Really simple feeder. I know you guys are thinking, oh, the coons are going to tear the shit out of that. No. If you keep it full and, and you, you stay on it, they won't do it. If you leave it empty, um, a lot of times they'll pop a cap off or something like that, but I very seldom have ever had one of these uh, chewed up. Next coon feeder. Okay, now that we've made our Burger Kings, we've made our feeders, you, you got the idea. Now, you got to know how to use them. And you know what? It's pretty simple. You can put it out just about anywhere, and you're going to draw some coons. But I've worked at it a little bit. And, and I've used some techniques and they really work. 
This is, a, I'm going to show you a technique if you have A, a very limited amount of trapping area, B, you have a limited amount of time to trap, and C, you, ha you trap a big area like I do, and I use this now to fill in the voids in my trapping line, which makes me become more efficient and makes me, uh, gets me more fur on the, on the fur shed. So, first off, if you have a limited amount of space, Let's just say you're first starting out on trapping, uh, you don't have a lot, but you've got a, a cabin up north um, on an acre of land or two or three acres, or you got a public area that's close to home and uh, you just got a limited amount of space. What you're going to do is you're going to build a Burger King there. Somewhere on that little bitty space, build a Burger King. And in a week or two, if you use the techniques I show you, there should be some coons coming in there. And they're gonna come, like I said, to an area they don't have never really had a reason to go to. But now the Burger King's there, they're there. And then you can take, set your traps there and catch a couple raccoons. Uh, maybe it's an area you want that's really easy to get in with your uh, younger kids or whatever. But if you have limited area, this is perfect. And that's how you do it. Now let's talk about limited time. Let's just say you work Work a job. I mean, most of us nowadays got a job, you got to work, you know, you're on mandatory overtime and you're working 18 or 16 hours a day and you just, you got no time to trap. Well, you can use the Burger King method and you can still rack up quite a bit of coon because it's going to help you with your time. You can take and make 10, 15, 20, I got over a hundred of these feeders made. That's how committed I am to trapping Burger King style now. But you can take as many as you got and you can go out and set them in different areas. Maybe you only got three, maybe you got 10, maybe you got 20, maybe you got a hundred. And then let's say you got the weekend comes, get out there bright and early Saturday morning or even Friday night, set a couple traps, each one of these, Go back, check them, take your coons. You can leave them up and do it another week. But let's say you uh, want to expand your area. The first weekend, you can take and pull this feeder down, pull this feeder down, pull this feeder down, still set your traps, the coons are going to come. You're going to catch the coons, move these feeders to another area, and then the next weekend, you could be trapping fresh area. So... Works perfect for a limited amount of time. Now, the way I use it is, <laughs> you all know I do a lot of road trapping. I cover a lot of area. I get in, I get out. And let's just say I run my trapping line on the roads and I cover all that area. It's probably anywhere between 30 and 60 miles. And I usually set up when I do my trapping, I do, uh, I'll start off in uh, the northeast, then I'll go to the southeast, then I'll go to the southwest, and then I'll go to the, to the, to the northwest. And I just kind of use them areas, but I, I trap one area specifically. What I do now is I go in, let's just say I'm trapping my northeast spot. I go in and, uh, you know, I got a culvert here that I always set a trap at. Um, there's a cornfield here this year and I got trapped there and then there's a river that goes through here So I always got a trap there there come down here. I got uh, You know another trail set right here another trail set here. Here's a cornfield that I can trap and I do there Sometimes I got five six miles between these spots Why because maybe uh, maybe I don't have permission to trap this or and if I don't have permission to trap it, feeders, Burger King set doesn't do me any good. But let's just say I'm along here, and uh, this is a great big section of public, public hunting. But it's basically a vacant lot. I got no real reason to trap there. The coons don't have any real reason. I don't want to spend a lot of time. What I can do, I can build a Burger King. So I can build Burger Kings at a lot of these spots and fill in my trap line. And while I'm running my uh, northeast section, I have feeders out in my southeast section. 
And when I get to my southeast section, I put feeders out into my northeast section or northwest because I usually trap about a week or so in an area. And, and it, really in Wisconsin, we got just a few weeks before we got freeze up and the coon trap is done. So if I divide them up and I give about a week in each one, I got about four weeks of trapping and that's usually all I got. So I use this to fill in my areas and I'm filling in my areas before I even get there because I have so many feeders now. So uh, this is the way to go. And let me, let me, uh, let's, let's break this down even a little bit more as far as to where I make my sets. If I come in and this is a big, huge section of public hunting and it's you know we got the road here and we got the road here if this is more than a half a mile what i will do is i will set up a burger king here and i'll build me a burger king in this corner now what that does is it draws all the coons in off of this private property and all the coons off of this private property and the coons that are here half of them go that way half go that way hopefully and now I've got two Burger Kings set up in an area, and it really helps. And this is along my trap line normally where I'm already trapping. Or you can just do it because public's all you got. So, and then now let's say the next thing is you can get permission sometimes on just a little piece of land, or there's just a small piece of, let's say, 20 acres of public hunting. You can come in here and just set one feeder up right in the middle of it and draw them coons in from all the private all the way around you. Um, another thing we have here in Wisconsin, we'll have uh, public huntings that go, there's a parking area here, there's a really thin piece of land and it goes like this. I don't wanna really waste my time running up 100 yards to a spot here and trying to figure it out. I'll just go ahead right here build me a Burger King right there. And then uh, I go in there and basically now I'm trapping these coons that are coming from here. So if you think about it, the Burger King set really works for everybody. It works for the novice trapper just starting out because he wants to catch some coons. It works for the guy who's a pretty good trapper, doesn't have a lot of time. And it even works for guys like me that, you know, we're, I don't want to say a professional, but I, I know what I'm doing when it comes to trapping coons. And this thing right here is just kind of, revolutionized the way I do. So I'm never too old and I'm never too stuck in my ways to not learn more. Um, so that's what we do. So now I think the next thing we should do is uh, we should probably get out on the line and catch us some coons. I did a bunch of trapping on Burger King sets last year and I have the footage. I've kind of been saving it. I haven't let it out. Uh, you've seen a little, little bit of it on trapping on the edge. But I did more when I got back home. Actually, while I was out for the week on trapping on the edge, I had Burger King sets here that were already drawing the coons in. I set traps on them. So let's go out there and catch us some coons. Weeks ahead of time. You come in, you can trap for two days, and we're going to see how much fur we can get in two days. So we got one in here, I see. So uh, we'll get him taken care of. You know what? He's not a very big coon, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna let him go. Not a very big coon, but he got a big attitude. Got some stuff tangled up there. No catch pole. for the wear, a little psychological damage he probably got in his head. But uh, we'll get this trap reset and we'll get on down the line. All right, third check of the day. Got us another coon here. It's a pretty dark one. Um, he's gonna stretch out pretty nice. At first I thought he was little, but he's, he'll, he'll stretch out pretty nice. Nice looking coon. Um, you guys can see we're on public hunting. I got a corner right here. Show him that. So where I like to set him, in the corners. Um, right off the road. Want to try to stay away from the parking lot, but uh, let's uh, 
Let's get this guy taken care of and get on out of here. All right, we'll get him rebated and get on down. All right, got us another spot here, uh, feeder spot, corner of public hunting. Um, I don't know what I, I, I had some thoughts when I set this trap. I left the, the trap, uh, the chain and the, the cable pretty long because I wanted to get a little closer to that feeder. And uh, well, it worked. I mean, I got him, but you can see the size of this catch circle. He got a lot of mud. He's been a very, very busy coon. Big old boar coon, I'm assuming he's a big old boar. Um, usually if it's a sow coon, you'll have all the little ones caught here too. Um, he's a vicious little sucker. We're gonna get him whacked off. I'm thinking this uh, this catch circle's probably gonna be really good for tomorrow, we'll see. Um, but we'll get him taken care of and get out of here. That pellet gun there, guys, I looked it up last night, um, about $250. Oh, we're going to have to do some washing on that coon. Definitely a dirty coon. He's been busy. $250. Bucks. And uh, it's going to be a, it's a heck of a squirrel gun. 22 cal. It's really all you need. Let me get this reset and get washed up here a little bit. We got plenty of mud on me. And uh, hey, here's we'll get on down the line. Caught that dark coon yesterday. We've got another one here. It looks like probably his brother. So we're going to take care of him. These, uh, I'm telling you guys, these one cock nitro piston 22 caliber air rifles. They're freaking awesome. All right. Remember, just take your time, guys. You deserve to get it a nice, clean shot. All right, we're going to get these all baited up. All right, here, right here is a prime example of a perfect place to put the Burger King set. We have uh, just this little strip of public hunting. Um, it's just a little strip that goes down here probably 200, 250 yards, and then it opens up into a big chunk. But as you can see, there's nothing around this whole area. There's no corn, there's no nothing. Nothing, 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 some pine trees. So it's a perfect place. Um, if I got traps a mile that way and I got traps two miles that way, I would usually drive by this spot. But now since I've been putting in the Burger King set, I just quick jump into there into that little thick area, put my feeder in, tie it up to a tree and be ready to go. So these are perfect places that I talk about for filling in the line. All right, like always, I want you guys, before you use the old Burger King technique, check the legalities in your state. I've checked them in mine here in Wisconsin. A um, couple things when the wardens we talked, they kind of had an issue with me putting corn and dog food mix in there because they said that the coons were eating the corn or the dog food and leaving a little pile of corn. That could be considered baiting, and we just didn't want to go down that route. So they told me just go ahead, use dog food in here, and you'll be set. So that's what I'm going to do this year. Um, as far as uh, pre-baiting or pre-staking, pre-staking is illegal in Wisconsin. As far as putting feeders out before the season, I, I, we really don't know the legalities of it. I guess it's going to depend on what the warden says. Easiest way to do it is uh, I go ahead, trap my best area without feeders the first week. I have feeders set up in my next area that I'm going to trap for the next week. When I go into that area, I trap feeders out into the next area I'm going to trap. So I kind of stay a week ahead. If you're not going to trap the first week because you don't think the hides are prime or whatever, that's great. Put your feeders out right there, opening day of season, and you'll be set. You'll have a week of feeders running, and uh, there's no issues. So get out there, have fun, and uh, we'll see you this season.